Greetings Indie Warriors and welcome to I Dream of Indie. My name is Old Gamer Joe, bringing you another review today as we look at Nexoman on the Nintendo Switch, a mobile port that is the prequel to Nexoman Extinction, another game that we featured here on the channel. Nexoman Extinction is a game that I really had a great time with, so I was excited to see what the original was all about. And while it is a step back and not as fully realized as Nexoman Extinction was, as you might expect, it's still a lot of fun in its own right. The story of Nexoman is often told by a very boomy and enjoyable narrator. The main idea here is that Omnicron has descended down to a once peaceful earth and is an evil bastard. Omnicron is a massive threat to the world, but heroes of course rise up and take on this new challenge. This all leads to a very unfortunate war, the world is thrown into chaos, but you as a tamer begin the game with an earthquake. To start out, you can choose either a male or female tamer, and then you can name your character whatever you wish. After that, you can select a starter Nexoman. I went with Sprunk because it's an adorable little skunk I just couldn't resist. Of course, each Nexoman of over 300 is going to have its own unique statistics and characteristics. Its strength, attack, and defense will vary, and of course the abilities that it can use will also vary. You will learn more abilities, and eventually your Nexoman will also evolve once it hits a certain level into some really cool forms. Combat is pretty straightforward and turn-based. You can throw Nexoman traps in order to catch other Nexoman. You have your standard red Nexoman trap, and then you have a gold trap, which is a guaranteed hit and can't miss. With some of the Nexoman, you'll want to wear them down first in order to throw a trap at them and catch them that way because they won't always be caught on the first try unless you do have that gold trap, which are a little more rare. Each Nexoman has a certain amount of stamina points, so as you use abilities, you'll drain that. You can restore those with items if you so wish, or you can cycle between different Nexoman that are on your team. You're allowed to hold up to six Nexoman at a time. The rest will be sent to your base where they will stay until you swap them in if you so wish. And there's a good amount of strategy here. You're going to have to be switching quite a bit depending on what your character is hit with, what items you have. If you're paralyzed or something, for example, and you don't have a way to be unparalyzed, you can quickly swap to another Nexoman and hope they don't get paralyzed and then deal out damage with that character. Good strategy here. I overall enjoyed the combat system. Again, very similar to the other game, Nexoman Extinction. I did find that for the first few hours, my lead Nexoman really did carry the team. Perhaps that's expected, but I would advise leveling up some of the ones that you really like and trying to evolve them as soon as possible. But anyways, when you're not progressing the story, battling Nexoman and doing all that fun stuff, the game takes place from a top-down perspective. While things start out simple enough, you have shops where you can purchase items and all of that, eventually things will open up, you can warp around the world at some point or another and that will help with travel because it's a fairly large world, I would say. There are inevitably some deeper mechanics that you can get into with your Nexoman in order to get them stronger and stronger. I like this game though, just as I liked Nexoman Extinction. It's easy enough for players to get into. It's fun to try to collect all the Nexoman. Obviously, if you're a Pokemon fan, you're going to get a lot out of this one. It's a no-brainer. And if you liked Extinction and haven't played Pokemon for whatever reason, you'll also really enjoy this game, even though, as I mentioned, it's not quite as fleshed out or quite as polished. The game is challenging, but I would say it was mostly fair. There's plenty of opportunities to grind and get stronger, and again, being able to switch between so many different characters does help quite a bit, but it has its challenges. It did feel like the more you used certain Nexomon in battle, the more experience they would be given at the end, even though the experience is delved out to all of your characters. Indie Greg did point out that that was a bit different in the mobile version, which I did not play, so it seems like some of the mobile trappings have been stripped out of this version of the game. But yeah, you're getting a lengthy quest here, and that's made all the more lengthy if you want to try and collect all 300 plus of these Nexomon. Visually, the game is a real treat. It has that same beautiful 2D art style that Nexomon Extinction featured, maybe not quite as vibrant and bright, but overall still really good, charming towns that you'll come across, the battles all look excellent, all of the different Nexomon have unique personalities, the visuals are astounding in this game, I think they've done a fantastic job with the art direction once again. The only little technical hiccup that I noticed on the Nintendo Switch version of the game is that there would be a quick judder when you would switch between screens, but it was nothing game-breaking, performance was overall just fine. I also really like like the soundtrack of this game. I think it's cute, charming, fits exactly what it's going for here with some great melodies that you'll remember long after you've played the game. I think the composer has done a great job here with these compositions. That narrator that I mentioned earlier, pretty amusing, maybe a little too dramatic at times, but I liked it myself. 
Overall, Nexomon comes well recommended. If you were a fan of Nexomon Extinction, you'll enjoy this one. It does feel a little bit like a step back at spots, so it's kind of weird to get this game now after the fact, but that's the order I ended up playing them in, having never played the mobile version. Still had a good time with it, kept me busy for a long time. I think it will do the same for you. If you're a fan of Pokemon-style games, obviously a no-brainer. A well-made product nonetheless. Thank you so much for watching the latest video from I Dream of Indie. We would now like to take a moment to thank our great indie warriors who support us through channel memberships. Mitchell Hall, Bunny, Kevalo, Bill Tikas, Christian Cruz, Strict9, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Peach, Adriana Amato, CJR, PSC, Sequoil, Skeptism, Jen Rose, Jesse, CPM, Julian Colbus, and JRS the 8th. Thank you so much for all you do for independent developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Everybody else, please head down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.